Every year, musicians make great songs and albums. Every year, the Grammys attempts to recognize the best music made within that time frame. And every year, we all collectively get mad on Twitter when our favorite albums lose or get snubbed altogether. I've been thinking about this concept a lot recently. I'm a huge fan of the Grammys and Oscars. Music and film are just about my two biggest passions in life. It's like Christmas for me seeing all my favorite actors or musicians in one space but then there's the aspect of them actually giving out the awards. It's funny how hypocritical I can be when I'm watching the winners get announced. When something I love wins, it's like, what an important moment for the artistic landscape. This is monumental. I love when a masterpiece gets its recognition. And then when something I don't like wins, it's award shows are meaningless. It's just for ratings. How and why would you ever say that one piece of art is better than the other? Blah, 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 blah. I always tell myself not to get worked up about them, and it happens anyway. But, with this recent batch of Grammy nominations for the big prize, Album of the Year, I knew I wanted to make a video about them because... Man, it's like the people who vote for these things are living on a different planet. By nominating three albums that I've seen no one talking about over the last year, and then this Black Pumas album that came out before the eligibility for these Grammys, but then they released a deluxe version in August, so they nominated that, you would think that no good albums came out this year. <laughs> But I didn't want to make a video just complaining and saying, but Phoebe Bridger's good, fetch the bolt cutters 10, the weekend make fun song, run the jewels. I wanted to make something to get your attention, sit you down, and explain to you, this is just what happens at these award shows. They always nominate mediocre albums and snub great ones. And I'm gonna show you this by using data. Oh brother, this guy stinks! Yeah, I get it, this isn't gonna be the prettiest, most exciting video in the world, but I really think it says something about how consistent the Grammys are at nominating stuff that is lame, and at least for my own sake, I think this is gonna be cathartic and really tell me to stop putting so much emotional weight on these award shows. My thought process was this, with something that gets nominated for Album of the Year, you would either hope that it's beloved by fans or critics, right? Those two groups don't always agree on things, but if something is universally adored by at least one of those groups, then sure, Album of the Year nomination. So I went back and got a quote-unquote user score and a critic score for every Album of the Year nomination since the 2010 Grammys. For the user score, I went to what seemed to be the two most popular sites for this kind of stuff, Rate Your Music and Album of the Year, and I took the average of those two scores. For the critic score, thankfully Metacritic is a site that already does that work for me and aggregates scores from different publications, so I just took that directly. P.S. Getting all this data really made me step back and kind of reassess how I view those two groups. It's funny how harsh the user base is on Rate your music, and then you go to Metacritic and the actual critics seem to be way more lenient with their scores. When someone says the word critic, I imagine the nitpicky pretentious judge and then everyday people speak for the masses, but at least with how I'm doing this, those roles seem to be reversed. Anyway, every album has their user score, Metacritic score, and then I threw in a total score which just averages those two out. In my eyes, the total score is supposed to be the best of both worlds and get the truest rating of a given album. For each year's Grammy nominations, I'm gonna run through the numbers of what was nominated, remind you what won, and then I'm gonna bring in a few of the best albums that could have been eligible that were not nominated, and compare the difference. Near the end of the video, we're gonna go over some fun stats, and then show you which years in the past decade had the best and worst Grammy nominations, at least by my calculations. Going back to the Grammys held in 2010, we're starting off with a batch of albums that do a good job representing my theory as a whole. Besides this day, Dave Matthews Band album, I can't lie, I'm not very familiar with Big Whiskey and the Grugux King, the rest of these fit the Grammy mold in my opinion. Extremely okay albums that left somewhat of a mark on pop culture, but it's much more about the superstars that made them getting nominated than the actual quality of the projects. With sixes across the board for total scores, except for a 5.1 for the end which I think is too low, the album that actually took home the win for Album of the Year was Taylor Swift's Fearless. 
which compared to these nominees, that doesn't seem too offensive, right? How about when you take into account that these iconic, memorable projects that are actually good themselves, they're not just made by superstars, could have potentially been nominated. 808s and Man on the Moon were unique new sounds hitting the mainstream that were super influential going forward. Listening to XX brings me back to that time period in such a specific way, and Meriwether Post Pavilion was the critical darling of that year. 2011's Grammys saw two standouts in the suburbs and the fame monster, and then the usual ultra-safe, mediocre, forgettable albums that you haven't listened to front to back since they came out. With total scores of 8.3 and 7.7 .7 getting nominated and the 8.3 actually winning, this is certainly one of the better possible outcomes for any year. But then you get the reminder that the rest of these nominees could have all been replaced with projects that were album of the year candidates for everybody else, and that hope in the Academy gets diminished yet again. For a fun fact, just with the examples that we have here, LCD Sound System, Beach House, Joanna Newsom, and Flying Lotus have never had their albums nominated in this category, and Eminem has had three. 2012's Grammys reminds us that, simply put, if you are named Lady Gaga, you will get a nomination for Album of the Year. The Grammys loves their superstars. And while we look at this mixed bag of albums by famous people getting nominated, you see that Adele's 21 took home the win, and you think to yourself, this is good, right? <laughs> Yes, for whatever reason, the album of the decade, Kanye West's My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy did not get a nomination for album of the year, but Bruno Mars's Doo-Wops and Hooligans did. Is it starting to hit you just how meaningless all of this is? And yeah, we've got Bon Iver getting snubbed, and then I get it, they would never put Danny Brown and St. Vincent on that big of a stage, but that proves my point even more. If the best albums aren't even in the conversation, why does any of this matter? 2013's Grammys, I remember them like they were yesterday. With Jack White, Frank Ocean, and the Black Keys getting nominated, it seemed like something might be changing. Good albums are getting nominated. Oh wait, never mind, this is the album that won. <laughs> Weep for yourself, my man, will never be you what is in your heart. This is an example where the Academy doing something risky is still so safe and boring. Mumford & Sons are this British folk band, that's weird, Fun have a period after their band's name, now that's cool. These groups weren't traditional superstars, but they were some of the highest selling acts of 2012. It's them picking something that might seem interesting to somebody that lives under a rock, but man, who cares about Fun and Mumford and & Sons in 2020? To me at least, Album of the Year should almost be seen as them saying, this is the project that will define this time. It is important, people will remember it, and I'm not even gonna bother talking about my snubs, because we all know pigs will fly before we hear LL Cool J introducing Death Grips to the Grammy stage. 2014's nominations aren't bad, and compared to the rest of the list, they're genuinely pretty fantastic. We're gonna ignore what happened earlier on that night and see that Good Kid Mad City, Random Access Memories, and Red are all albums that I'm happy to see get nominated. This Sarah Bareilles album getting nominated is one of those choices that is just confusing, sort of like the ones that we talked about for this year, and then while it's obnoxious that Macklemore got nominated, it's not surprising whatsoever. He was everywhere around that time. While I would have liked to see Kendrick get his due, it was cool seeing the robots win, but yet again, the Grammys hate nominating post-graduation Kanye in this category, they don't give any of the big stuff to anything even close to heavy metal, and so on. We're gonna speed things up a bit, but you should be getting the gist by now. 2015's Grammys, fine, fine, instantly forgettable, commercially successful, commercially successful. Beck takes home the win, which would be cool if it was even close to the quality of what got snubbed. All of these projects that Pharrell's Girl got nominated over are some of the albums of the decade, but nope, this half-decent Beck album gets the nod so the Grammys can feel like they're interesting without actually picking what was clearly better. 2016's nominations are arguably the best of the decade. I can see valid reasons for all of these being in the conversation, and even when I bring up my snubs, there isn't a tremendous tremendous difference amongst the scores. The only problem here is that one of the best albums of all time was nominated, and it lost to the album that comes up when you google the phrase Taylor Swift sellout. 
Jean. We have superstars galore and then Sturgill Simpson in there too. It must have been strange for him to be in that category. The memorable moment for this one was that Adele, who won for her solid, safe, very Grammy winnable album, said herself that Beyonce and Lemonade should have taken it home. The Lemonade album was just... <laughs> So monumental. Like always, there were better albums that could have replaced the extremely mediocre big name nominees. I just don't even have to illustrate my point when the person that won the award knows that she shouldn't have. 2018 saw a genuinely great batch of choices, another contender for the best nominees of the decade, but with Awaken My Love, Damn, 444, and Melodrama, all of those were just a little bit too weird. It doesn't matter if everybody on earth would agree that those were the better choices, let's give it to the most boring option, which was also the worst option. Not to discount anything that was nominated because all of them make sense, but yeah, there were amazing choices not in the conversation that were obviously less marketable to a wider audience, yada yada yada. 2019 saw a whole mess of nominees with plenty of ups and downs along the way. Shout out to Brandi Carlisle, her, and Janelle Monet. I feel like their genres can be ignored on the big stage, and the award went to Casey Musgraves, which I'm happy with. Post Malone and Drake could have been replaced with any of these that are 10 times better, but again, the Grammys don't want to put these weirdos on screen at the end of the show. Last year was another huge step in the right direction for acknowledging stuff that is both genuinely good and not super mainstream. The only laughable pick here was that Lil Nas X EP, where Old Town Road was a quarter of the track list. Billy winning was a big W in my humble opinion, but I really got my hopes up with Igor specifically. I could have sworn that it had a good chance. And finally, we arrive at these upcoming 2021 Grammys, just a slew of dumbfounding, out-of-touch picks that make you think that they just drew names out of a hat. Sure, none of these albums are terrible, I'm happy about a few of them, but you just question what they think is culturally relevant. My big snubs are everybody else's big snubs, how Fiona, The Weeknd, RTJ, and Phoebe didn't get nominated is beyond me, and now let's review what we've learned so far. This shows you the bottom of the barrel nomination-wise. According to their total scores, these are the 10 worst nominations for Album of the Year since 2010, and surprise, we even got a project that won the award in here. On the opposite end of the spectrum, these are the best nominees, and while the highest quality choices didn't end up winning, those last three took home the win, so... Yay, I guess. When we look at the winners, we see some good, some bad, and a whole lot in between. Using my formula, the average score of a Grammy Album of the Year winner since 2010 is a perfectly fine 7.3. So kids, don't shoot for the stars, shoot for something that will please a large audience that most people will forget about after a few months. Last but not least, I have a chart showing disparity amongst the nominees and my choices for snubs. Basically, it's the difference between the average score of what got picked and what didn't. What I'm going for is the bigger the disparity, the more the Academy screwed up. According to this chart, the year they nominated what they were supposed to was in 2016, when there's really no difference between what they picked and what they didn't. The biggest disparity was the year prior when we had this mediocre bunch up against some of the albums of the decade. There was probably a lot of outrage after that, and they tried a little harder the next year. In conclusion, I hope this showed how little they award the project that deserves it, and how they barely ever nominate a good collection of albums. They play it safe with superstars making radio-friendly, commercially successful, boring albums. They nominate traditional rock or pop in the same way that the Oscars nominates traditional dramas. If you're making experimental hip-hop, art pop, or heavy metal, Good luck. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on my Twitter feed when Coldplay or Post Malone inexplicably beats future nostalgia or folklore. Hey, thank you for watching that video. I really like these ones when I'm able to mix data and Excel sheets and art. It's fun for me. Uh, I dropped some merch recently, so check that out if you want. It's outloudmerch.com slash collection slash alpha hyphen media. If you want to support the channel, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media at RenshawHS. You can buy that merch, support me on Patreon, and thank you again. I'll see you soon.